What happens when three buffoons give life advice, explore unrealistic situations, and give random topics more thought than they probably deserve? It's the Spitballers Podcast with Andy, Mike, and Jason. That's loud, man. That was a loud one. <laughs> that was like, what, what are they, a tugboat? Like it, a tugboat? I was inspired by you, Andy. Oh, really? What did I do? Well, a couple shows ago, you said, you know what I realized? I realized no one's ever scatted with their teeth shut. Oh, right. Yeah, and, I did uh, do that. Uh, yeah. And so you did it. You yeah. just went with that. And I said to myself right before, because I didn't have anything planned, obviously. <laughs> Wait, you didn't plan that out? No, no, no. That was that was in the moment, Mike. Um, I thought I've never scattered super far from the microphone. Oh, and then you you and now but, I can't say that anymore. But then you're like, but if I'm far from the microphone, I know that I got to raise my volume. Exactly right. I so I screamed. That explains my ears. Thank huh. you. Welcome in, one and all. Spitballers podcast episode two seven three. Interesting. The two seven three? No, it's just it's a lot. Oh, you know, mm-hmm. it's a lot of episodes. Would you rather some baller dash on today's show? And then we are drafting kitchen utensils. <laughs> Which um, did you guys come up with this one, Al? As you take a sip from that, uh, what was that? A, a ginger ale? Uh, it's just a Lacroix. Okay. And no, I did not come up with it. Who did? Was I, it? Was I it on you, our list? Yeah, it was on hmm. our list. Well, I'm excited. I, I, you first you hear you hear utensils and you're just like, ah, yeah, forks and knives, spoons. But there's a lot. There's a lot to think there, about. I, I learned a lot of things are considered a kitchen utensil. Oh, you had too narrow of a mind. Yeah, that's that's. I thought only uh, like there there, there are three. There's three things. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna take one each, and that will be the end of the draft. No, and Jason, with that scat, you earned yourself the first pick in today's draft. So and congratulations. there is a clear 101. Okay, we'll find out if that's true. I, Interesting. I don't have that opinion. No, I would imagine most people like you wouldn't. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's weird because I... What? Do you eat a I, lot of that I don't eat? I don't think there's a 101. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's a 102. <laughs> I don't think there's a 103. Okay. I've got... Before you make the pick, I want to try to guess it. Okay, that's fair. Which when could, we get when when I'm yeah. on the clock, I will give you the opportunity. Yeah, which I mean is revealing some other utensils, but I'm not really worried about it. We have, we've all we've all been in a few kitchens, am I right? <laughs> yeah, you're all right. right. I'm right. All right. Um, I would have thought Mike, you being the uh, the man who cooks the most amongst the three of us, that you would be the most aware of all the different utensils. I didn't know they were called utensils. Oh, okay. What were they? Yeah, kitchen items. Kitchen Tools. weapons. I don't know. I usually call them my kitchen weapons. <laughs> kitchen items. I like it. All right, let's get it going. Would you rather? Ooh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Very rarely do I accidentally read ahead, but I really liked what I was getting to. Would you rather fumble your mother's urn, <laughs> spilling the ashes everywhere? Okay. Been there. <laughs> Or drop, or drop your future wife's expensive oh. engagement ring into the ocean while proposing in front of a crowd. Oh, okay, so everyone sees it happen. Now I I know somebody who's lost their wedding ring in the ocean. Really? Yes. And they did. Did they get it back? No. <laughs> no. What? Yeah. They I, did, but they did try. Has anyone gotten anything back from the ocean? No. I. I they lost. They tried hard. I mean, they hired what? A one of the people with a, the metal detectors. A submarine? No, not a sub. <laughs> I, I mean, how do you find something? <laughs> yeah, like a scuba in team. the ocean. If team you, Bravo, go. Yeah, look, look. If you drop something in the ocean, the tide recedes. Someone could come out there with a. You know, with a metal detector, and maybe it's stuck in the sand. So they tried that, but it didn't work. Okay, so, so they you were guys like, are proven. They were on correct. the beach. They lost it on the beach. If you say like they, I know that's part of the ocean, but like, no, I, like, I know what you're saying. If you you lose it in the ocean, I imagine you're on a boat or something. There is a part. I'm gonna break some news. To okay, you. all right. There's a part in between the ocean and the sand that where the water and the sand they combine. Okay, and a lot of people they kind of play in that area yeah they call that the beach 
Yeah, the, that's where they were, you know. Okay. But like, also, like when the waves are up, you're in the ocean. When they go down, you're on the sand. Now, and that's how it works. If your feet are touching the ground, you're on the beach. No, you're in the ocean. You're uh, on the beach. So you're saying knee high, is... you're on the beach? Yeah, absolutely. No, you're no, not. No, you're in the ocean. You're in the ocean. Thank you. What? Knee high. Now, feet. One, as soon as your feet are completely covered, I think you're in the transitionary period. He's telling me that when all these shark attacks happen in the lower water area, yeah, there was they're a all beach, beach attack. attack. I would say there was a shark attack at the beach. Yes. And people will go, that doesn't make sense because sharks can't go onto the beach. <laughs> yeah, man. You don't. You're I, not I am this not <laughs> alone. There are, <laughs> there are dozens, dozens of us out there. So wait, if you jump, or do you go to the ocean real quick before your feet come back down? Yeah, I mean they're not. <laughs> it's not touching the sand. So wait, hold on. So what you're saying is, there is an area where you know, I could lay on my back and I could float, okay, and not touch the ground. But you could be standing. Yeah, and we're, we're in two different worlds, <laughs> my man. In two different worlds. Oh man, well, you're well, out there on the ocean. <laughs> I'm standing here at the beach. You could be even further out than me where I'm floating. Yeah. That's true. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I, rules yeah. are rules, I Jason, guess. This is breaking down, but Jason just he's <laughs> gotta stick to a bit. Sticking with it. How um, much how much money did they spend on this recovery effort? I would say that was probably a uh, probably a six hundred dollar effort to get this ring back. Man. Because it's sentimental. Five hundred dollar ring. It's sentimental. You know what I mean? Like this is not just the value of the ring. It's like how much above the value of the ring would you consider to pay? Uh, no, definitely not. If you could guarantee getting it back. I, if it was like your great-grandmother's, you know, it's been passed sure, a down. Family, maybe a family heirloom. All right, so so getting to the question, I do have some follow-ups Which, here. Pro tip. Yeah. Don't ever wear your wedding ring to the beach or the ocean. Yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> this I agree. Gonna put that, oh, yeah. You want to take that off. I'm going to put that out there for everyone. You can't lose it in the beach if you don't wear it to the beach. The fumbling of your mother's urn spilling the ashes. What is the etiquette on ash cleanup? Can you use a standard broom and dust bin I feel to like, pick up ashes? I feel like a a, a standard uh, broom and dust pan is the respectful way to go. I think a shop vac. Okay, that's, that's uh, disrespectful. That's you, putting her through. You know, like. A filter. Up. Oh, that's got a filter. Sometimes. Yeah, you're gonna lose some of that if you spill it and you don't have. A broom, dustbin, shop vac, all this stuff, mm -hmm. and you go to the store. Do you make a purchase thinking about your your mom, like what she would like to be cleaned up with? Yeah. You're saying like you got to go like high end dustbin. That's pan? what I'm asking. Yes. Oh yeah. I, mom can't have rubber made. Like, can you bargain? You wouldn't want to bargain, right? No, and 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 I like the mom. Fact that you're, you're worth it. <laughs> <laughs> the, I I like the fact that you're going out and buying a new one because I think the the most disrespectful thing would be oh, using a, yeah. a dirty broom yeah. you want it to well, what if all it, the fuzz at the bottom just used it one time and then you throw it out can i at least use a dustpan that i already have but i wash it yeah that's that's okay. a sign of respect <laughs> now with the question here just so we're all on the same page is the spilling of the of the urn also in front of a crowd no it's just private okay so i mean no, it's in front of somebody mm. well yeah Yes, yeah, Mom, Mom's watching down, very upset with you. She's looking up in this case, <laughs> but so that's that's alone. So I could like I could have this happen and tell nobody about it, and just live with the live with, embarrassment. Yes, yeah, so the know. own personal shame. Yeah. Is that what you're going with? Is it the? I'm, I'm, one, I'm just making sure I have all the facts. One thing to just consider. Okay. Okay. There is very little shame. You spill. Okay. This is you. You just put a bunch of ash out there. <laughs> There is no way you're not breathing some of that. Okay, that is, yeah. a, that is a very yeah. fair point. You know, yep. can s wrestle with that thought. <laughs> hmm. Because, you know, that's... Uh, well, you you came from inside of her, and right, now she's now inside she's, of you. That's Yeah, I mean... The I circle <laughs> of life. Yes, that's, a, that's what that song is about. That is. It's about you, breathing you in. Does your that mom. mean... Does it, <laughs> That's right. I remember those lyrics. Yeah, you would. Ash is, ash is very, uh, what do you call it when something just gets up in the air? Oh, uh, plumey? dusty. Plumy. Plum, plumy. That's plumy. Good, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, your mom would be pretty plumy. <laughs> um, I feel like, so, like, feel like you called her a big lady there. 
I feel like you're like, yeah, yeah, your mom would be pretty plumey. It's <laughs> not, you don't plume more, the heavier you are. Well, the more, the heavier you are, the more ash you have. Yeah, if you have more ash. That's, what, got, that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's some huge ash. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, baby. All right, this is gone. But yeah, I um look, I feel like there's a lot of danger oh. here with the mom one. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna lose the engagement ring in the ocean. It'll be a test of uh how much she loves me. If she if she's not gonna marry me after the that then, then it's a you, you it's made, a material had, love. Yeah, you had some big problems. What if you spent twenty five K on that ring? Oh gosh. Twenty five K. What's your price where you would no longer choose the oh, ring? Oh yeah, that's it. Um <laughs> definitely less than that. If it's five or more, 5, then 000. mom hits the floor. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what they say. That's if it's it. five yeah. or more, mom hits the floor. Oh my god! Breathe, are we, are it, we breathe it in. Oh. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. <laughs> she was a bloomy lady. <laughs> uh, I'm. I'm spilling my mom no matter what. Okay, Mike. Uh, it's like, I mean, if it what? What if it's like on the couch? Oh man, I hope it's leather. That's what I, like. I mean, there are is that's if, you got to shop back. If you there. hit, if you hit the tile, th- yeah. worst things can happen. But if it's like a carpet couch combo, that's there for that's forever. What do you feel worse about? Okay, carpet couch combo. Okay. You're at home. You got uh-huh. a bad cleanup, yep. and you know there's gonna be that is a vacuum situation. Some, some, no matter yeah, what, yeah, no matter yeah. what. But buy a new and vacuum. a deep clean. Um, or you take mom. On a picnic, on a windy day, oh, right. and it goes poof. Oh, sh- <laughs> you know what? I'm and you lose that half. One's, that one's like, I'm fine. I'm fine. If with that. you incidentally, you're fine losing half yeah, rather than to nature. St- yeah, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. We agree. It's like, eh, it could be worse. You know what okay. I mean? Like storm drain. The thing is, <laughs> sure. The, but the thing about the couch is, like, you, that's that's now that's mom's spot. <laughs> So oh watching, yeah, like, you're not gonna sit there. Well, you'll you will never not think about yeah your and your shame. Do you have to disclose that on a sale of a couch? No, no, <laughs> no. Comes with mom. <laughs> some mom it comes with some. Mom's, now, this is mom's favorite this couch. Is mom's favorite couch forever. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm dropping the ring. I'll take the. I'll take. I'm the, the only one loss. dropping mom. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I think you so. Unless the, unless the ring's a lot of money. What if we're outside? And it's rainy. <laughs> Ooh. Mom mud? Mom no. mud. Oh, no. That's, yeah. No. I feel like that's my limit. <laughs> that's where I have to say no. That's where I have to drop the See, ring. See, we had this debate on the show earlier where, like, you'd rather be cremated, uh, Mike, and we would rather be buried. Half of us. Imagine. Look at all the plume-related issues. Yeah. That you'd be bringing to your family. Well, here's- okay. Having to keep track of you. Just put me in the dirt. Okay, here's my follow-up question to this, because I- don't know i have no experience with this they don't just put just just uncontained ash in the urn like it's got to be in a bag or it something is, it is in a bag okay yeah thank you yeah i know it really kind of ruins this whole joke <laughs> and why the urn why not throw the bag up on the uh, mantle because <laughs> so that you can is really, disrespectful so you can really see her. that is yeah. disrespectful you can, i like someone it's not even a ziploc bro i've never every single movie tv show there it, that has had an urn with the ashes in yes. it. yes no bag i don't so know that if that's it can universe. Because, so that it can break because it would not and be, be funny funny all yeah. right i mean maybe i'll write into my will that half of it goes into an urn and the half you get to play with it okay you know what i mean get to get to okay. just do whatever you want gross all right this, this is gone <laughs> as far as it can go <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's get to something more serious. Would you rather be a centaur or a minotaur? <laughs> Just would you? Which one do you want to be? Well, let's start with a. What's the difference between? Oh, those this two. is easy. Yeah. This is easy. Centaur, Cent- minotaur. Centaur is the you are on the the lower half. You're a horse, mm-hmm. so you got the four legs. You got the horse tail, but then you have a human torso from everything else. Right. The minotaur is you're like a combination of a bull and a human but you're you're standing all on, humanoid you are you're yeah uh, what is it, anthropomorphic yeah so like you're, you're you're two yeah you stand on two legs but your legs are bull legs but at your least, arms like, are human arms you have I, you're there they look like human arms but 
Yeah, I think you have hands. Then you have hands, and yeah. then you have a bull head. But you're usually much larger. A minotaur is not human size. Every time I've ever seen a minotaur yeah, you're, depicted, you're, they're they're like, like a giant. You're like a real yeah, a real big human. But I mean, yeah, big yeah, human. Yeah, like I'm, human. I'm okay. Like I'm six eight. Yeah, you're like yeah, the yeah, rock. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you just you're. But minotauri. If the <laughs> but if, more more bully than he is. Yeah. If the rock had horns, okay, You'd be a minotaur. would he be a minotaur? Pretty close. He would need. He to, would need a snout. He would need to be a little snout. a little furrier. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know but, minotaurs had. But snout. which would you rather be? I mean, yeah, I, you're a bullhead. It's clear the top speed is with the centaur. Yeah, for sure. You're a four legged, and you're gonna need it because you're not getting in a car. No, but you're the not. minotaur can get in a car. I, the minotaur could ride a centaur. Not according to onward. Disney's uh, Pixar movie. Remind me why the Minotaur cannot get in a car? No, the the Centaur. Well, I know a Centaur can't get in a car. No, they can't. They get in the cars in the, in those movies. Oh, you're oh. saying? Oh, okay. But that, outside of the lore of that one Pixar movie, that changed everything. That's canon now. <laughs> centaur canon. Yeah. You can be ridden. You could? comfortably. Yeah. If you're a Centaur. You can't. I mean, you could give a killer piggyback if you're a minotaur. Do you attract more flies as a centaur? Ooh. I have to imagine that both bodies are attracting flies. But you publicly defecate with the horse one? What do you mean? What do you mean publicly? You can go behind a tree, but you don't wear underpants. I assume a minotaur wears under underwear. Certainly can. Can can I can get a big pair of pants? I can't put. Have a you big ever pair seen a horse? No nope. okay. pants. So here's a great question for you guys. Uh, I like where it's going. <laughs> when a horse wears pants, <laughs> is it just the back two legs yes. in there? Yes, yes, yes. Or is it? Like, no, no, no. It's no, not it all. Have it's to be not all, all four. four. It would have to be all four. No, it's not all four. Well, the <laughs> front ones aren't arms. There's still legs. It's two <laughs> pairs. Then you got to wear two separate pairs. No, you have one, and it, you, you're I'm telling get, me that I'm it's it has, the whole body. Yeah, and it, you got four little, you know, holes for the legs. So and you're then telling it, me horses can't wear shirts? Correct, but a but a centaur can. But they could they could wear a scarf. Yeah, they got so a neck. A, you got like a f four legged or, Levi's and a scarf is what you're wearing as a horse. Yeah, with a tail coming out. With, now with, see, there is a public. A, yeah, this has been thought about. Yes, that's why I was. But I don't think we've ever discussed. People it. don't know. <laughs> if you should wear them in several ways, I mean, the, the if they're if they're pants, number one, they have to cover the privates. Yeah, they got it. So they that's gotta why be, the back half. We the know back it's half on is, the back. The back half is locked in. Yeah. It's in the pants. It's just a matter of, well, do you cover the front half or not? To me, it it looks most natural to put them on only the back half. See, I think it looks most natural to put it to where it covers the entire lower body. So it would go up over the body as well. I guess a centaur wears a shirt yeah. because they have an. No, they don't because they're sh they're shredded. That's true. Centaurs are you never. You would never wear a shirt with that body. Maybe a tank. I want to see a fat centaur. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a plumy centaur. Yeah, let's see if someone's drawn one of those. Yep. This is not. <laughs> yes. I mean, people have done it <laughs> all. The, live, the internet has everything. The live googling there was dangerous. Um. I, if I have to be one, I'm going to be the centaur. Me too. Me too. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty awesome. I First mean, chance to really gallop. Oh, man, you could ride I've like the wind. I've been wanting gallop. And a minotaur, I mean, you have a duty. You have to, like, guard a, a labyrinth forever. You do get horns, though. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't that's know. That's true. Is that a perk? I mean, a whole, I mean, it's a weapon. You don't get to wear ha normal hats. What do you? You can uh, hang stuff off of them. Who would you rather fight? I would definitely r rather fight someone without horns. But do people get trampled by regular horses, not even centaurses. <laughs> centaurses. <laughs> um, but the minotaurs normally have a bigger upper body. Yeah, minotaurs. And horns. They're very strong. Super strong. I'd rather uh, fight a centaur. I'm going to fight a centaur, and I'm going to take it ATAT -AT style. I'm going to try to- Yeah, yeah. You know, that's, that's a good one. Yeah. All right. Uh, do we got time for one more, Al, or do you want us to move on mercifully? <laughs> Let's do one more. You got a favorite here? Uh, I like no. The, no, I'll, I'll pick one. There then. you go. Would you rather be a fighter pilot that's scared of heights? <laughs> oh, boy. Or a submarine captain that's scared of the water? Oh, that's so easy. The, the, Is it? The in the sky one. Yeah. What? If you are afraid of the, 
No, hold on. Are you, you so afraid of depths? Is that what you would say? No, you're, so you're saying you'd rather be the fighter pilot? Yes. Afraid of heights? Yes. But you're as a fighter pilot, you are seeing everything that you are terrified Lots of. Lots of heights. At least if you're the submarine captain, you are you don't see it unless you choose to. If unless you got a porthole. So I'm afraid of spiders. Okay. Right. And I have had times where I have visualized a spider that is not there. And freaked myself out. Okay. If I am inside of something that I know is under the ocean, I am afraid. I'm not, I don't need to see the water. It's, what are you even going to see? It's just you darkness. Know, you know where you're at. That's, yeah. But and, that's the point is you don't see it where if you're. I mean, technically in a fighter jet, at least you're only seeing up. You're not really looking down. Oh, and looking down, they're like, don't look down when you're afraid of heights. You're seeing everything. As they, they don't have pilot. like a like a, a see-through bottom on the fighter pilot. No, but you have peripheral vision. You can see. Out. Buddy, you, I'm holding on for dear life in that thing. <laughs> Here, Here's what's interesting. You're putting though. on one of those, the, the horse like blinder restrictions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you can't see. I'm ejecting immediately. <laughs> No, oh, I, that's not, afraid of heights. You do not want to eject. That's true. I am. I think I might be afraid of depths. I saw somebody on a on a reel talk about the coolest underwater bedroom hotel. Oh, that thing is awesome! And they're like, first you go down this elevator. Yeah. Then you walk out into the room. The whole time, I all wait, I'm wait, thinking. Wait, wait, you're underwater. Yeah. yeah. You it? go down an elevator. So it's all, and then you Have go. Have you ever been in an, in an aquarium where, like, you go <laughs> underneath it? Okay, I'm with you now. I thought this was like you're in the water. <laughs> I'm like, do you it's have to hold your breath with a scuba? <laughs> like, three, two, one, <gasps> and then the elevator slowly goes down, opens up. You got to no. swim out to your room, and then when you come up, you're in the room. No, this is your. All I can think about in those situations is the nightmare of the cracked panel. The cracked panel. And you, in the middle of the night, you have to sleep. And at any moment, the water, like, I'm not getting up an elevator with water in it. Like, I'm dead. Yeah, you're dead. They, so. I have heard of that, though, Jay, where the, uh, I've heard a, a former astronaut talking about a training facility, essentially, where they're underwater. And then to get to the bathroom, like, they got to scuba up and sw swim over to a different area. They do work way underwater with huge devices that come straight down and keep all the the oxygen and stuff inside of them yes like on the bottom they go to the bottom of the uh, bottom of like rivers and stuff and you can be walking around down there yeah they've I've, when they when, when they're building they, people builders that, oh just people people no. that like are searching the bottom of something i didn't know if you were saying this was specific to astronauts if i'm gonna die i want to fall to a painless death versus choking on a bunch of water. Mm -hmm. I'm going worst case scenario that, pain. That is the that is the actual differentiator is when worst comes to worst to meet your fear. Okay. One of them is much better. Guess than if the you other. go deep enough in the sub. Yeah, it's it's, it's an instantaneous also depressurization. There's no falling. Is there any options on the land <laughs> that well, I can I'm go afraid of grass. <laughs> Please don't make me a horse. A centaur? Yeah. What? I don't know. Oh, yeah. What? I don't know. We're, Jason, we can move on now. What just happened? I don't know, man. <laughs> Jason doesn't know either. He just, he didn't have to, he could have just ended with afraid of grass and we would have got it. Don't well, make me I didn't a horse. Want, I didn't want to be a horse. All right. Back with some baller dash. Hey, Spitwads, I want to talk to you about Factor Meals. Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals make eating better every day super easy. In fact, when I got my package of the Factor Meals, I, I got to be honest with you. Uh, you know what? I was very happy, and then I was a little sad. You want to know why? Because my son stole half the meals. Caleb stole half the meals out of the boxes because they were so good, and I don't even think he knew that they were healthy. Uh, they were just delicious. So look, you've got 35 different options a week to choose from. If you're doing keto or calorie smart or vegan, veggie, whatever, uh, there is more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition packed add-ons that you can add to your your weekly plan. Uh, you got two minute meals that you can you know handle really quickly. You've got snacks and smoothies and more. Look, Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast upscale options done easily, flexible schedules. You can pause uh, if you know you're going out of town or you don't want meals for a little while. 
It's just really easy. There's no stress. There's no mess. Um, they're 100% ready to heat and eat. No prepping, no cooking, no cleanup. Just hide them from your children. You hear me, Caleb? Don't eat my food. All right, head to factormeals.com slash ballers50 and use the code ballers50 to get 50% off. That's the code ballers50 at factormeals.com slash ballers50 to get 50% off your meals. What time is it? Game time. All right, we are back with another round or several rounds of Baller Dash. Al, are you excited for today's game? Oh, yeah. These are always a good time. So we've got five prompts from five different categories. We all secretly gave our own answers to Al Borland before the show, and uh, he has the right answers as I well. I whispered them directly into his ear. And wow. he memorized them all. Mm -hmm. Um, identify the correct answer, trick your opponents into picking your answer. So, uh, yeah, two points. If you guess the correct one, one point, if somebody guesses the answer you made up. All right, let's do it. All right. Those five categories are to remind the people it's a uh, definition, a notable person, an acronym, a movie plot and weird laws. So we're going to start off with the definition. The first word is snurge, snurge, snurge is snurge to shy away from certain types of work. A quick bolstering of one's energy. A small fracture that commonly occurs in roads or sidewalks. Okay. Or to laugh while drinking, resulting in liquid exiting through the nose. Oh, that's such a good one. <laughs> See, I thought that fracture one was good, too. Um, and one of them's true. So the shy, what's the first one? Shy away from? To shy away from certain types of work. And then bolster one's energy. 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 Like so, like you snurge up. You that get reminds a me surge. Of, you get a, you, yeah, like that's a surge some, of that's, that's one of your twos. That's Jason. <laughs> uh oh, Andy's confused. Yeah, oh. Andy. No, the, the poker I mean, face. Surge, that's Andy. I'm I I will be the one to go first on this one. Okay. I'm, go, I'm taking the laugh one. I don't care if it's real or not, because if it's fake, you deserve a point. I'm gonna take the fractured one. I am taking the fractured one as well. All right, Jason receives one point because Mike guessed his answer. Thank you, my man. Dude, it's too good. It was a good one, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Mike re receives two points yeah. because both Jason and Andy guessed his answer. It was very good as well. <laughs> uh, you did correctly identify that Andy said a quick bolstering of one's energy. <laughs> and the correct answer was to shy away from certain types of work. So you, like, so we, you sn sn I snurged? Snurge? <laughs> I'm going to snurge that. <laughs> so All right. Did you really think of surge? Oh, you betcha. <laughs> You bet. And it was, I, I wanted it to be like that because I, I don't know. Jason did one like that a while yeah. back. Yeah. Would, I 100% thought of the surge of energy. All right. All move right. on. We're going to move on to notable person. I got better ones in store. Okay. The notable person we are talking about today is good old Donna Griffiths. Donna Griffiths. Plural. Got it. Correct. Was Donna Griffiths famous for creating edible cutlery to reduce plastic waste? Oh, goodness. Inventing and earning more than $66 million selling Tupperware. Okay. A teenage girl who sneezed for 978 days in a row. Oh, boy. Or for inventing the breathalyzer in 1958. Oh, boy. A lot of inventions happening here. I'll go first. I'm going to okay. go sneeze. The sneezer. How you, what, what are you going to do, Jay? Uh, <laughs> so edible cutlery. Yeah, Tupperware. Tupperware. Tupperware, sneezing forever, or inventing the breathalyzer. I'm going to go Tupperware. Oh, man. One for sneeze, one for Tupperware. How does edible cutlery even work? Sounds delicious. I mean, but like, how many bites can it withstand? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I Is, guess. I mean, you don't really do eat I lose, your fork now, Mike. But You don't bite your fork. Oh, I hate but what if when I, people bite their forks. I mean, that's, PSA, don't bite your If you fork. do it three times, they will just come and drag you off to an insane asylum. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go. I believe that's not Griffiths. That's Willy Wonka who <laughs> made the edible cutlery. Well, then, hey, whatever. I'm on Wonka. I'm going with the edible cutlery. All right, Jason, you receive one point for Mike guessing Thank your you, edible Thank you, my man. Wow, we are, we're locked in. <laughs> yeah. And then, Andy, you received three points for identifying the correct answer, which was oh, the girl the who sneezed. sneezed. 
And then uh, you also had, was it Jason that guessed the Tupperware? Yes, yeah. he did. Okay. So Andy wow. gets three. That's a bounce back. That is a bounce three back. Three to two to two. That is correct. At the end of oh, two wow. rounds, Andy is in the lead with three. Mike with two. I've Jason got a snurge of points coming in. <laughs> We're going to move on to the acronym, and the acronym we are trying to identify is LHI. LHI. Is that Little Rock Historical Institute? <laughs> Little Rock? Lettuce Harvesting Innovations. <laughs> wait, wait. Bull. What is bull? <laughs> Lunar Habitation Initiative. Lunar? Okay. Lunar Habitation? Yeah. Or Left Handers International. Okay. <laughs> That's some bull. I'm going lefties. Oh, that was quick on the draw. What are you doing over there? Oh. Trying to trick people? I didn't like any of the others. I Little think. Rock Historical Institute? That's correct. That's mine. I'm voting for Little Rock. Okay. Little Rock? What's the lettuce? <laughs> lettuce harvesting innovations. <laughs> okay, I'm going to mark that one. Oh, no, come on. And then the lunar or left-handed? Ooh. I locked in Little Rock. It's too dumb. I'm going to take the lettuce one. Whoever gets gets a point. That's All fine. right, Mike, you get a point for Andy guessing your Little Rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was dumb. <laughs> Jason, it was so dumb. you get a point for Mike guessing my your lettuce harvesting <laughs> innovation. Dude, you're, you're loving my answers. Uh, they're fun. <laughs> and then Jason, you get two more points for correct, oh. uh, getting the correct answer in Left Handers International. Yeah. So that should have oh, been three points to Jason. And one point to Mike. I'm in the lead, baby. I knew it was wrong, but yeah. it's all right. I don't just... want to be right. So yeah. We have a lead change here. Jason is now in the lead with five, and Mike and Andy uh, tied at three. Okay. And we are moving on to the movie plot. The movie we are trying to uh, guess the plot for is called Fingers. Fingers. Is that a musical tale of self-discovery of uh, seamstress Ruth Taylor leaving audiences tapping their toes to the rhythm of its unique beat? Or is Fingers... Seamstress, I got it. Okay. A pickpocket from the streets of Boston falls in love with an unlikely target. Is it Jimmy Fingers is a New York City <laughs> concert pianist by day, Come on. but at night he works for the mob collecting debts? Okay. Come on. Jimmy Fingers. <laughs> Or, a professional pianist suffer, suffers a catastrophic injury that takes away the use of his hands. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm going the seamstress one. It, I, I have to. I feel like that's just too long to be that on was, the back that, of these That's cars. what I thought, but it was, then it was the first one. And yeah, I'm go I, think I, I think seamstress is the right one. Those other three are ridiculous. How dare you? Those are some quality movie plots. Yeah. Do you hear about Jimmy Fingers? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh that's man, so bad. All right, I'm gonna give whoever went with Jimmy Fingers. I'm gonna I'm gonna vote for Jimmy Fingers. You deserve to get one just because it's so stupid. I, uh, it's too long. I'm going. I'm going with some some logic. I'll take the seamstress one. <laughs> Andy tried a unique approach here Did he by bet guessing on his, own? his own answer. I was waiting for someone to do that. And I, I don't know if he convinced you, Mike, but he got you. Yep. Yeah. All right, there's one point uh, for so you. So Andy gets one point, and Jason- Wait, I don't get the point for guessing mine? No, you don't no, get I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Jason, you get another two points for Ooh, no. guessing the correct boom, answer. Boom, baby. Jimmy, Jimmy Fingers. Fingers is the- Oh, Jimmy come on, Fingers. man. What a Mike's, Mike's made-up answer was very close to the actual correct it answer. It certainly They're was. Both about pianists. And I, when, this is not a joke, when I saw that the thing was named Fingers, I'm like, this is someone's mob name. Mm. So, should have stuck with it. I'm just disappointed that you didn't completely sweep guessing my answer. <laughs> you were the pickpocket? I was the pickpocket. Okay. Falling All right. in love. Technically still anybody's game. Jason has a pretty strong <clears throat> lead with seven points. Andy with four. Mike with three. <clears throat> And we are going to the last round, weird which laws. is weird laws. Thank you. Uh, in Seattle, Washington, if a dog weighs over 25 pounds, it must be on a leash in public spaces. Boring. Pay full fare on the bus. Oh, pay full fare. Okay. Not be allowed on public transit. Oh, diametrically opposed. <laughs> or wear a collar with a metal latch. Public transport or metal latch. Correct. Caller? Yep. Okay, so be on a leash, pay full fare, 
on public transport, not be allowed on public transport, or wear a metal clasped leash. Is that with correct? A collar. Uh, it uh, says collar. Wear with a, a collar latch. with a metal a collar. latch. Okay. I I think I know what I'm gonna do. I know what I'm gonna go with as well. I've okay. been going quick. You go now. All right. Since I'm in the lead, I'll go. I'll go first. I'm gonna go. They oh, that's have a good to, rule, by the way. The person in the lead should always have to go first. Oh, I'm gonna have we'll to go. Paying full fare, <laughs> you're you're too heavy. That Pay your price is unfortunate because that's what I wanted to go with, but I can't catch you with that. Hmm. You think... asked for me to go, so. So. Yeah. If you if you guess that, you literally can't catch me, right? If I guess that, I can't catch you. But that's the right answer. I'm going bus. I'd rather be right with less. I'm lose by go less. Pay full. I'm going to go with you guys. This all right, sweet. we're all going. Okay. Yeah. I win. <laughs> Everybody gets two points for guessing yeah, the correct answer. Yeah, there. I knew it right yeah. away. Too. But do I get I, another again, half point? Yeah, Mike was so close with the right <laughs> to the right answer. He he said not be allowed on public transit. Well, in, in fairness, he was exactly wrong. He was as far it's, away from. It's the right vein. I know. I know. Oh, well. all if right, they didn't Jason. Let good job. You dogs won. on to public transit. That would be. A shocker. It's not all dogs. It's 25-pound yeah. dogs. Jason, congratulations. You are the winner of Baller Dash. Thank you. Hey. I Amazing. think we have an applause. people are very excited. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you all. All right. Quick break, and we'll be back with our draft. Hey, Spit Wads. Guess what? We love prize picks around here. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app. It's got over 3 million members. And uh, look, Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. Uh, it's just you against the numbers. You can pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. In fact, here's what I like about Prize Picks they even offer injury insurance. So if you're playing a game and um, look, if one of your players gets injured in the first half and doesn't return in the second half, that won't count against you and the rest of your entry stays live. That is one of the uh, the very special things about prize picks. Uh, they're the only daily fantasy sports platform with injury insurance. It's simple to play. You can make your picks. And you know what? I, I do this stuff for fun. It's not just about winning money. It's about having some fun. And, you know, we talk about sports predictions on uh, the fantasy footballers, and that just fits with what prize picks does. And so from our experience, this is the funnest way to play and, uh, you know, you can select, you can see what you're going to win, and it's super enjoyable. So go to prizepicks.com slash spitballers. Use the code spitballers for a first deposit match up to $100. That is prizepicks.com slash spitballers. Use the code spitballers for a first deposit match up to $100. The Spitballers Draft. Well, the time has come. For Jason to have the very first pick in our utensils draft, he says it's bona fide guaranteed number one. And congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank Not only, all drafts have a 101. There's only two things I think would be in your 101. It's either, I'm just going to say them. It's either number one, a steak knife because you love steak. Okay. Or is number two, a can opener because you love SpaghettiOs. <laughs> Those are my two guesses. You see me, you feel me, you know me. What you don't know is that SpaghettiOs have come with the pop top for oh, so long now. Oh, that's true. Um, that that's just irrelevant. I've never heard such a stupid take. Yeah, that's bad. Um, it's close to your first guest, but it's much more important. It's something that when you get hired as a chef, sometimes you bring your own. It's yep. so important. It's hundreds of dollars. You have one for 20 years. It's a chef's it knife. BYOK. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Chef's knife is on my list. What is I'll it? bet what, it's at the top. What, what is a chef's knife? It's, it's a, an all purpose, really high end, good knife. It's real. It's heavy. Probably weighs 20, 30 pounds. <laughs> I believe that's an axe, <laughs> sir. Bring your own axe. Uh, so you went with the chef's knife? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I just learned what that is. So I appreciate it now. <laughs> um, look, I'm. So I'm, it was not on your list. Interesting. Who am I without an ice cream scoop? I'm yeah, taking okay. an ice cream yeah, right. scoop. I figured, okay, okay. You know, the the one of the biggest problems in my marriage 
is my wife, for whatever reason, you know, every marriage, you, you pick a few things. Mm-hmm. Choose your battles. You die on certain hills. And I, for some reason, she's she's just died on this hill that an ice cream scoop is inferior to using a regular spoon. What? It's yeah. inferior. Inferior. Did, does, she is, will use a regular what? spoon. It's and sh- mind you, that will bend the spoon sometimes. Oh, for sure. For sure it will. Because of the ice cream. Well, it's not made for it. Yeah. The ice cream scoop is, however. Now, let me now, ask you this. Let, let me, me tell you why you she doesn't. Okay. I know uh, the reason she doesn't is because it's something else to clean. Sure. Okay. Yeah. As opposed to if you use. She, snur- she wants to snurge uh, <laughs> cleaning that. And so she uses a regular. She wa- If you use a regular spoon, then guess what? You Which, eat your ice cream with the spoon. I totally respect that as one who wants to be as efficient as possible when it comes to cleaning up things. But does she know that they, like, there is an actual like scientifically created ice cream scoop where it has uh, it has liquid inside the handle that which transfers the heat of your hand to make this the more could, scoopable? She could care less. And what's amazing That's is, is that take. of all the things to clean on planet Earth, Cleaning an ice cream scoop is you run it underwater yeah, for a, four tenths of a second. It's a simple rinse. Yeah. This but anyway, sorry. Which, uh, this is which ice cream scoop do you prefer? Do you prefer the one that is a little bit? A yeah, little I know, bit thin, I know where you're going. It's a little bit know, thinner, but yeah. it's got the button that yeah. can help get the Kerplop. ice cream, kerplop the ice cream out. Or do you prefer the big, heavy, thick that metal one. one? Me too, man. Yeah. The, the, you Give know me what? An easy scoop. The little, the the little like uh, trigger. Never works. I've never had one deliver the goods. Yeah. <laughs> if you made me a trigger one where it like legit shot Pro- that thing off into the bowl, <laughs> it doesn't work. Just a little gunpowder and uh, that ice cream will come right out. So, yeah, I, I'm going to go with the ice cream scoop as my number one pick. Nice. I did not put it on my list because uh, out of respect for have you. you. Have, you ever, have you ever tried to be efficient? And then eating your ice cream with the with ice the, cream scoop. Okay, wait, you just solved a huge problem. Yeah, <laughs> you can do it, but it feels it feels naughty. <laughs> <laughs> feels like you're breaking some rules. <laughs> oh my gosh, what is this thing? <laughs> All right, so moving we, on. Because like a scoop is a serving metric. Yes. So if you pick up the whole scoop, yeah, man, your bite or what you're going after now is the serving. Look, there's a there's another situation like that that would feel a little. A little sneaky. Later, we'll get to All it. right. Mike, you are up. You got two picks. Spork. Okay. You're, going, you're going with I'm the spork. I'm going with spork, baby. Yeah. You want to talk about efficiency? This bad boy can do it all. Look, that it, it won't surprise you. My wife is a big fan of the spork. We have metal sporks. Hey, that we, you have metal sporks? We have metal sporks. They make metal yeah, sporks? Of course they do. And you know what? She'll constantly try to force the spork onto us on non-spork meals where I'm like, I just want- What are you eating that doesn't that can't take a spork? That's her opinion. <laughs> is it spaghetti spork is it cereal spork what are you doing with so spaghetti and the, a spork man here's the problem a spork is a fun name and it's a cute utensil i'm not gonna begrudge the pick but i will begrudge the actual item it's it's, not it's that a good, bad man. spoon or a bad fork that's it that's a, it's you're, you're it's inferior mm. in whatever you want it to be it can, she wants some for ice cream too she'll use the spork for the ice cream scooping that could work. That it actually, digs in. That yeah, could that work. That actually that could is work. a pretty good use case. <laughs> Dang be it. honest. All right. Uh, so I got Spork. I feel like that's a that's a quirky Mike pick there. That's a good. I pick. like it. That's I a like good it. pick. I've I've got a theme that I think I'm gonna go with. Combined uh, utensils. No, I wish. Uh, the Spork is the only one I know of. I'm yeah, sure there are. I was more. trying to think of one. All right. Uh, the next one I'm gonna go with is a whisk. I don't mind the pick. It's up a, a whisk. A whisk is high on the list. Now, is your theme five letter utensils? My theme is words that are fun to say. Sport and whisk. <laughs> okay. Look, the whisk is also it's a great utensil. Do you like the the big whisk or the little whisk? The big one. Oh, the big yeah. metal whisk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you got it's and it's gonna have a big sturdy handle. Oh yeah. Sturdy. You're talking that might as well be an ice cream scoop. I can't be wearing took, out my they, forearms while just, I'm whisking. Some, some consider the whisk to be the butter churn of today's culture because you could you could put it in a, a like a food processor or a um, a mixer, you know, mm-hmm. and and you don't need the whisk. Mm-hmm. Uh, see, Al just said that. Give me an electric mixer. I ain't doing that by hand. <laughs> Look, if you're making like you, two would, scrambled do eggs. Do you also use an electric knife? 
Oh, I do not. I do mean, you, for why carbon, not? A, carbon seems... a turkey or something, maybe. If you make some, like, I don't know about you guys. A lot of people make their scrambled eggs. They just crack two eggs and mix them on the pan, which mm-hmm. I get. Yeah. But sometimes I want to make, like, special scrambled egg. You put them in a bowl. So I put them in a up. bowl, and I put, you know, like the, you know, milk, milk in there. Yeah. and so, Yeah. And I whisk it, and then I make it. It's perfect. Yeah. And I wouldn't use a, mis- a mixer for that. No. no they're, 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 they're egg lo- it just needs a mild whisk. Yeah, there's a lot of things that use just a mild whisk. I mean, you're not you're not going to be making cookie batter with a with a little hand whisk. That's true. I mean, they used to, right? I uh, there was not yeah, always ben, electricity. Probably not. Yeah, and there was always cookies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so spork and whisk. So you've got like a little, like a quick, yeah. fun team mm-hmm. going. So I, I'm up, right? That is yep. correct. All right. All right. Um We've had a we've had a debate on this show. Then when the show was re released, that debate resurged on Twitter. Oh, uh, Big Spoon. Big Spoon, <laughs> Little Spoon. Spoons are for ice cream, spoons are for, for cereal. Mm-hmm. Spoons are for soup. I like those things. Mm-hmm. Um they are versatile. Mm-hmm. So I'm taking uh, can I just take spoons? You can yeah, just take spoons because right. that's that's a of better course. pick than taking a big spoon. No, I'm just taking spoons. Take yeah. spoons. So you good luck not. eating spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I mean you got me there, man. You got me. But I do, you know, look, most households it's in the drawer. Sporks aren't uh, other than my house, they're not in the drawer. I can't believe you have sporks. Yeah, I, I sports. don't have them either. This, I didn't, no, amazing. nobody has sporks. No, she was so proud when she brought them home. Like KFC is the only place yeah. that has yeah. sporks. <laughs> if you told me, right, Mike, right now, to save your life, you have to go get a spork, I would go only to oh, KFC. I don't, you can't buy them at the store. Like you <laughs> literally, I can, if I go to Williams Sonoma, like a kitchen no, store, are, they don't have sports. They don't have gourmet sports. I'm going to say, you need to go to KFC, sir. <laughs> I don't say... I love you. Yeah, Thank yeah. You no, for look, me uh, I'm going with this. Feels like going with like uh, one of the basic flavors in an ice cream draft. But I'm it taking, is. I'm taking spoons. So far, I have a theme: <laughs> ice cream, ice cream scoop, yeah, and a spoon. Yeah. All right. Um, is a bowl a utensil? <laughs> it can be. All right, Jason, you're back up with two okay, picks. With two picks, gosh. Oh, <laughs> I, I see one. You know, my my next two on my list, I would have taken, but out of respect. for for what you can do, Andy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip one of those. I'm going to start with a very, very commonly used, valuable, necessary utensil that um, every family needs from time to time. But what? I learned... That's, I thought that was the pick, man. <laughs> I'm going to, I picked butt. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> uh, but I have upgraded this device in my life. And I want to make sure that the people, the spitwads out there. Yeah, we knew we knew you had a bougie, whatever it is. Yeah, well, it's, it's not it's not very expensive, but it is such an upgrade. I'm I'm taking a spatula, but I'm not just taking a spatula. Okay, I am taking a fish turner spatula. Fish turner. Fish turner. Also, this is a crime against my draft taking the the oh, word spatula. Spatula. Spatula's That's fun. a great word. Spatula. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, fish, say that again. Fish, fish Turner spatula. You can Google it and see. Yeah, yeah, you know what it is. It's, when you see it, you know what it is. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 you might. It's see for it turning as, fish, but it's not. <clears throat> there is no so it's better. A, it's a spatula with slots. With slots, but not just slots. It's got a a. a what makes a curve. it so great? Because this was a uh, the type. This is a type of spatula that would end up in like kits for kids' toys. Like this kind of spatula. This is, if you want to flip burgers, the easiest you've ever flipped burgers in your life. Really? Get a fish turner. It's angled where it goes down so and then out. you're saying on the grill? On the grill. All right. Uh, it, Amazon.com. It, I'm telling you, everyone out there. It's quite the name. Really? Yeah. It, that puts people off. I I, am, I know. It's like I don't, yeah. I don't cook fish. That's don't, bad branding. It's terrible branding. Is there, they should is call there, it a super spatula. Is there like a... <laughs> Whoa. Tell, tell me more I, about the super spatula. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Hey, maybe I can get a manufacturer here and we can rebrand this thing. Because it is warm. Super spatulas? Yeah. No one go out and buy this yet. Wait until my brand comes out. Super spatula. Is superspatula.com available? Oh. So Mike's, Mike's picks are in shambles now. Yeah. Don't Sorry worry. There's that. more fun words. So, but you, you of course went narrow on the knife and narrow on the spatula. I want the best knife and the best spatula, my friend. 
And you know what else I want? I will. I, Hold on. I, I have some bad news, Jay. Super Spatula? You're going to need $2,400 if you want superspatula.com. Oh, man. Now, have we verified, is there already an existing Super Spatula? I haven't gone that far. Branded? Get on, get on that. Okay. Um, I need to know if my c- career needs to change here. Um, my second item is, I-, I think it's extremely valuable to have in your home. You want a nice one, and you can use it. Even for when you order or when you make it at home yourself and other items. But oh, I'm no. talking about a oh, no. pizza cutter. Oh, really? Yeah, like a, the rolling pizza cutter. Because you can get your pizza from whoever. You you order Domino's, Papa John's, whatever. You can still, like, you know, it's like the pizza won't break apart. Roll it again, man. C- give me some fresh cuts. You want to make a cheese crisp at home like I did last night? Right. Get that pizza cutter. <laughs> Easy. Uh, frozen pizza. Pizza, pizza cutters. Pizza a, cutter. Pizza cutter is a good. It's a good pick. It's an ice cream I want, scoop. I want picks associated with foods I like. Yeah, but th- yeah. that's. But you eat a lot of ice cream. You need an ice cream scoop. I eat a lot of pizza. I need a pizza cutter. Um, it's a great pick. I I'm honestly a little mad that I didn't think about it. Now I'm sitting here and I could take another like, I could take another basic. I mean, it's just sitting there. Yeah, it is. It's just sitting there for me. It, it. It's a fun word, though. I think Mike might be a little upset. Nah. I'm going to take chopsticks. Oh, I'm going to take oh. chopsticks. It, it takes, if you can learn to use them, you, it's feel, impossible. you feel smart. It's impossible. <laughs> you don't know how to use chopsticks? No, no. I, I don't really know. I do not. Not nope. really. Not in nope. a good way. How can you draft chopsticks <laughs> if you can't use them? Because I enjoy the process. You enjoy watching other people. No, I can use them. I use them I, on sushi, and I get it. Oh, I, mean, I, you, I have to do the napkin trick. What's the napkin, a napkin trick? napkin trick? Well, you just, like, if you roll, like, butt them against each other and roll a napkin and then fold it over, it helps. It gives you leverage so you can clamp. Wait, you need them tied together to use them? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't need that. All right. I said no, I can't I use them. They're impossible. Chopsticks are, are uh, yeah, I thought that's where you were going with your pizza choice mm. because, like, we have yeah. nice chopsticks at the house. I don't know what makes them nice. They're I mean, not disposable. They're, yeah, they're not wood. <laughs> you know what I mean? Are they metal? No, they're probably still wood. Yeah, they might be wood. Yeah, they're just not. But they got like a veneer that's like yeah. a, a, a strong veneer. I, mean, I know what you're talking about, man. Yeah. I feel what you're putting out. I got some okay. chopsticks at right. home. I'm right. going chopsticks. Mike, okay. you're back up. Uh, I'm going to – I have two more picks to close this thing out. Uh, I'm going to save what I think is the better word for my, my second pick. But my first one, I'm going to go with a grater. Oh, like a, a che- grater. Che- cheese grater? A cheese grater. See, I'm not in on that, man. Oh, that's just I I, oh, I can't dude, I've, use a grater I've, without thinking I'm gonna rip there, my fingers up. There is that, but I have I, I've made the switch. Oh, you go all I've, grated? Yeah, I I buy block. Oh, I, we, I buy blocks of cheese. You now. buy block? And I don't you grade I, yourself. I I don't buy the the pre shredded anymore. Oh my gosh! So I oftentimes do not buy the pre shredded, um, but, but I, I eat the block. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm not of the look, the best part. You get to the bottom and the, you eat the block, the, baby. The best part of the block, then, which you you also you don't need the cheese grater. You can also use the slicer is one for you, one for me. Uh, but the cheese grater takes so it long. doesn't it doesn't it does if you, you buy the size of bricks I'm buying. Mike. You <laughs> you you got to get a big boy grater then. I got I got a big boy grater. Then, it's called a food processor and it's awesome. You literally, there's a okay, cheese grater fine. attachment. Oh, really? Well, I was you t- ask this. if there's a powered one. Yeah, there, it's basically a powered one. There's uh, the. I think most food processors come with a cheese grater attachment where you take the cheese blocks, you just cut them into big, long chunks, uh-huh. and you put them down, and you just oh, watch yeah, this go. Oh, yeah, yes. Brrr, yes. Brrr, and you've got perfectly grated cheese. Do you, like, schedule time to grate your cheese? I just do it before I need it. Oh, right before. Yeah. And it's really? freshly grated. Okay. And you're super hungry by the time you get to eat. <laughs> it's really not that hard. All right, Mike, your second and your pair. your knuckles are bloody. Yeah, that yeah. part. Jeez, that's, that's, just, that's, always a, that's always a risk. But it's not ketchup. What's eating if there's not a little danger? I thought you said a little blood. Um, All right. Well, and the last Mike, one. your final pick. A ladle. No! <laughs> I yeah. wanted the ladle now, with my final pick. Ladle's a good pick. word. Ladle's a good word. Dude looks like a ladle. <laughs> ladle. I wanted the ladle. That's the one where I'm that's like That's a big spoon. That's the one where I'm like that if you if you eat soup out of the ladle, it's a little, now, it's a little naughty. 
It is. It's a little naughty. It is, but you got to have like a you got to have a stronger ladle. You can't be it can't be weak, cheap plastic. No, no, no. None of the things that we are buying here. There's are the, the high are end. The weak, it's, a, so it's a copper ladle. Yeah, it's a nice. It's it's, uh, it's heavy. I'm like I'm like, you you stuck me with fork. I've got fork <laughs> with my last pick. Look, if I get the basic utensils, I got to be happy with that. It is very funny to take like. What should be the first pick? Yeah. A fork. I mean, yeah. a fork is the number one yeah. most used Boring. utensil. Most used utensil is a fork for sure. Oh, I, I If found... we were all sitting down for a meal, I'm in the best shape of the of the three of us. Not until I... Jace is my... trying to eat with a fish turner, a pizza cutter, and a chef's I've knife. I've got a chef's knife, which means I've got all of your utensils. I've got a We spork, go to war. So I have them all. Also, I found a $40,000 ladle, everybody. <laughs> That's the Come one you on, get. Come on, man. That's the one. Is it gold? Pure gold? No, it's it fork in the fork. Seems to be a hand carved wood. That's it's I really mean, nice. I uh, yeah. All right, Jason. One more pick from you. Yeah, close it out. All right. I'm surprised. Tongs my, is on the board. Tongs was. It's a fun word. Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a good one. I thought. I thought for sure. You know, uh, tongs would be yours. Well, and, I wanted to talk about cheese grating. Okay, and, so oh, he was very fair. proud of his yeah. his new grating situation. Yeah. We're we're kind of above other people us, <laughs> us right. cheese graters uh, yeah um okay so i had left this behind i left this behind for you andy <clears throat> thinking you could get a ladle to go with your spoon to go with your ice cream scoop yeah. to go with this pick which is a big wooden spoon you know the big yeah wooden, i know what you're talking i know what it is those we know what a big are, wooden spoon is I, there's something about the wood that I really like cooking with. And in addition to that, a uh, little uh, life hack, pro tip, boiling water. Let's say you're making mac and cheese. Oh, yep. What happens when you make mac and cheese? It spills, it spills over. It just starts boiling up, yep. boiling over. You take a big wooden spoon. Oh, it knocks it over? You lay it across the top. You, it, it will doesn't, not boil it over. It doesn't boil over. When it boils up, it touches that wood. Science and cannot explain why this happens. Does. What? It's yeah. unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Yep. Just put a wood spoon it across the top. It, it's like someone's blowing on the bubbles. It's, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a lie <laughs> of lies. It's, I, it, that does not make sense. It doesn't make sense, but it does work. Come on, you you I've, guys are setting me up to burn myself. <laughs> Try it, everybody. <laughs> does everybody in Deucer's Alley, they know this trick. Has anybody heard of this trick? I, thing? I have. I don't know about those two, but Ab absolutely works. Yes. Yeah. Um, I will say this: there, there are limits to it. I have had it boil over once when I was like, "No, no, 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 no." Let, let, let me explain. It's not a perfect science. It, if you've got this thing on, good. if you've got this thing oh. on full blast high, and you leave, you walk out of the room forever, and the, and and it was already full to start. I've had it spill over a little bit, but ninety five percent of the time. It will not boil over, and and you can see it start to boil up. You watch it; it boils up. It touches a spoon. It says, "Oh, I'm it so sorry." The person's there. Yeah, it's like I did not mean to interrupt your your laying on this pot. That, that, that is. If you want a hundred percent hit rate, if you want a one hundred percent, no way it can boil over. Hit two rate. spoons. <laughs> you get a lid. <laughs> you, you seal it. No, the one hundred percent hit rate is you take a little before you boil. You take a little uh, like a paper towel. Okay. You put a little olive oil on it, and you just rub the olive oil on the on the top of the rim. Oh, I get it. Can't grip. It can't, it can't grip. grip and clam out. And it, and that's a hundred percent hit rate. You can't. You, you can't boil be, over. That make none of this makes any sense. Yeah. The the boiling water is doing what it what it do, man. Yeah. But why does it care about a spoon? I, I, it feels like what happens is when the when the water really gets boiling, where it's where it boils over. It's the bubbles are out of control, and someone's just got to tell them bubbles? bubbles. I think it's just telling these bubbles, get back in your place, get back in that water. You don't belong here, bubbles. I'm, my, I, I feel like a, I need to try this immediately. You should. It's pretty fun to defeat these bubbles. <laughs> All right, Jason's final team: big wooden spoon, chef's knife, fish turner, uh, pizza cutter. I've got the ice cream scoop, the chopsticks, and a spoon and a fork. Mike, you've got the spork, the Ooh, combo, two, two for, for one. one. Oh, yeah. The whisk, the cheese grater, and the ladle, and there you go. What did we learn today? A lot. A yes. lot. I didn't know what a fish turner was. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what a chef's knife was. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that a big spoon is 
some sort of sentient witchcraft. Being. Yeah. Um, I learned that a centaur can get in a vehicle. I was unaware of that. <laughs> How have you not seen? I've oh, seen wait. it. I just didn't remember. Sometimes we learn things again, Mike. Uh, and I learned that the bigger you are, the bigger the plume. <laughs> Ain't that the truth, brother? My plume's getting bigger by the day. <laughs> yes, it is. I wanna, That'll do I want to leave my family a lot. <laughs> In case they want to spill me a couple times. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Thanks for listening to the Spitballers podcast. To see what other nonsense the guys are up to, check out spitballerspod.com.